Last year I did a video to talk about the EV incentives that were available to Canadians. So I thought some changes have happened recently, so I thought I would do another video and just kind of go over it all again, maybe this time in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to start on the, in, in no particular order, but I guess we'll start on the west coast and kind of move towards the east. Now, just so you know, um, unlike the U.S., which is always in the news about the EV tax credit, in Canada there's only three provinces that offer uh, incentives for EVs. That's British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec. Having said that, let's start on the, best, on the west coast and start with BC and just kind of go over a little bit what they offer. So the first thing you need to know is B, uh, BC offers something called the CEV for BC program that offers uh, a pre-tax amount of up to $5,000 for a battery electric vehicle, a plug-in hybrid, or a fuel cell car that have battery capacities of 15 kilowatt hours or more. Fuel cell cars can also get an additional $1,000, so up to $6,000 total depending on the vehicle that you buy. Now, it's available to BC residents, businesses, nonprofit organizations, local government organizations, and any one of those can either purchase or lease a vehicle. Plug-in hybrids between 4 kilowatt hour and 15 kilowatt hour uh, batteries are eligible up to a $2,500 incentive. So th those are uh, uh, hybrid cars that have a gasoline engine is, uh, in addition to a battery. Now, as of March 2016, cars that have an MSRP or manufacturer suggested retail price of over $77,000 are not eligible. So this basically means all the Model S's and all the Model X's in Canada. Now for each one of these segments in the video, I will put links in the video description on YouTube so that you can see all and you can read the links uh, for each one of these programs so you get an idea of what's going on. Now BC also has a Scrap It program. Now, this program is an early retirement vehicle program to replace higher polluting vehicles with cleaner forms of transportation, such as thing, uh, like cars and bicycles. They will accept any model year of car. Up until recently, it was uh, 2000, uh, year 2000 or newer vehicles, so that's gone now. So what are the requirements? If you're buying a new electric vehicle, there are the way it works is that there's 500 incentive spots for the uh, year 2017. Now, as of this recording, and I looked online, there are 233 available uh, rebates um, uh, that are uh, still available. So less than half of them are unclaimed. So if you're thinking about a new vehicle, you can still apply for this. So how it works is that if you buy a new EV, you will receive $6,000 from the Scrap It program and $250 at the point of sale when you purchase a new vehicle from a participating dealer. Now, in the list of dealers, Tesla is included. Uh, in the past, they were not participating. They are now. So if you're thinking about a Model S or a Model X today, you can turn in any vehicle of any year, regardless of its value, and get $6,000 uh, from the program plus an additional $250. So what does it apply to? It applies to battery electric vehicles, extended range EVs uh, like the BMW i3 and the Chevy Volt, and fuel cell vehicles. Probably not too many of those around, but it does apply. Uh, you must purchase the vehicle or do a three-year minimum lease. And the incentive can be combined with the CEV for BC program. So you can get up to $6,000 on one hand and another $6,000 for a combined total of $12,000. Now the Scrap It program also has a provision for used EVs. So with this, there's no incentive limits. Unlike the Scrap It program for a new EV, there's no 500 spots. It's as many as you want. So how it works is that if you buy a used EV, you'll receive $3,000 uh, from the Scrap It program and an additional $250 from the point of sale when you purchase a new EV. And uh, again, Tesla's included in this. Uh, however, you can only claim one incentive per VIN number. So that covers kind of BC. Let's move on to Ontario. Now I have talked in the past and as well as on the show about Ontario's rebates for EVs. Uh, it's part of our Ontario Climate Change Action Plan. It just got recently updated as of January 1st, 2017. Now the program is funded um, up until the year 2020. So if you're thinking about a vehicle, you can get on these uh, incentives. So uh, you must be an Ontario resident, so you can't live outside the province, buy the car, take it home, it doesn't work like that. So here's how the program works. So vehicles between a five and 16 kilowatt hour um, battery pack are eligible from anywhere from $6,000 to $10,000. Uh, again, I will put a link in the video description so you can look at the table 
So you can see the base amounts based on the, on the battery capacity of the, of, of the car and what rebate you're eligible for. Now vehicles that have a 16 kilowatt hour battery uh, size or more get an additional $3,000. So the base amount's $10,000 uh, for a certain vehicle plus another $3,000. So there's your combined $13,000. But vehicles that also have five seats or more are also eligible for an extra $1,000. So cars like a Model S or Model X or Chevy uh, Bolt or a Tesla Model 3, for example, can get up to the full $14,000 incentive. So it's excellent that way. So the total incentives are up to $14,000 for a purchase or a lease, but you must do at least a three-year lease to get the full amount. Um, there are prorated amounts for one or two-year leases. The other big change too is the MSRP cap calculation that was part of the um, EVIP program um, as of last year is now gone. Uh, previously, it used to be capped at uh, $75,000, and now that's gone. So the new cap is $150,000, after which you don't get any rebate. So anyone who's looking at buying a Model S or a Model X is great news. I think it covers basically all those cars except for one configuration of the Model X. So you can get some good incentives there. Um, there's one extra little tidbit of, as part of the incentive is that uh, for high occupancy vehicle lanes, or HOV lanes, you can um, get green plates for the vehicle instead of personalized plates or the usual blue plates and that allows you to use these uh, lanes with a single, uh, single occupant on board. So that's good news for the people who travel quite a bit. There is also a provision for accessing HOV lanes that have, um, there's, a, there's a stretch of highway, I think it's in the Burlington Oakville area, uh, where you have to pay a little extra to use these and that gives you access to those two. It, it's, you still have to pay the fee, but you can get um, use of those too, but you still have to apply for that. Now Ontario also has something called the EVCIP incentive, and this is for the purchase installation of an electrical vehicle supply equipment or an EVSE. That's the box that goes on the wall if you want to plug your car in with a, a special charger. Now what the rebate does is that it covers 50% of the cost up to $500 of the charger or the EVSE that goes on the wall and also covers 50% of the cost up to $500 for the installation by a licensed electrical contractor and the final ESA inspection. So it's a combined rebate of up to $1,000 that you can claim. Now, I did mention a little bit before about the climate change action plan that Ontario has. Uh, now, some of the details I'm going to tell you right here are pending. They have not been necessarily implemented yet. So one of the things that the government is looking uh, to do for um, purchasers or, of, or owners of EVs is to give us free overnight electrical vehicle charging for home and multi-unit uh, residential customers, those are people that live in condos, apartments, uh, starting sometime in 2017. Now, this hasn't been implemented yet, but it's still on the books. Um, I've tried to contact the government a few times, and uh, they have not been able to give me any kind of update on this. I generally just got a canned answer at this point. So I'll try and keep on top of that. If I find out any information, I'll let you know. Now, the other part of the Ontario Climate Change Action Plan is the government is looking at ways of eliminating the HST, our tax, on zero emission vehicles. Um, the government said that they're exploring ways to provide full HST relief by 2018. Now again, this is not in place yet. I haven't been able to get any updates. So hope for the best, plan for the worst um, if you're looking at a vehicle. So plan on paying the full tax amount. Uh, but if it does come to fruition, that will make the cars even more affordable. The last part of the Ontario Climate Change Action Plan as it reflects for EVs is that the government is uh, doing an installation into 250 different locations all over the province um, of up to 500 um, charging spots really for level 2 and level 3 charging stations. This is called the EVCO program. It's currently underway. We have about four of them installed right now but I was just talking to some people last night and uh, they have a lot of them on the books to get installed over the next year. They're running a little bit behind on the program but it's still happening. Um, it's a phased in program, uh, so the first $20 million has been granted and awarded for the installation of these chargers, and there's up to $80 million uh, to get this finished. So it's gonna be fully funded. It's gonna be really good for people that need to do long distance travel. So the last province we're gonna talk about, in no particular order again, is Quebec. Now the Quebec plan is called the Transportation Electrification Program. Now how it works is that again, you must be a Quebec resident. Um, it is funded up until December 31st, 2020. So how the rebates work is that they will offer rebates of up to $8,000 on a battery electric vehicle. 
uh, on the purchase of a vehicle or a four-year lease. There are provisions for one, two, and three-year leases, uh, but you get a little bit less. And the battery capacity has to be four kilowatt hours or more. You can also claim a $4,000 rebate for a plug-in hybrid that has at least a seven uh, kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, but it also has to be less than 15 kilowatt hour. There's an $8,000 rebate on a plug-in hybrid with at least 15 kilowatt hour battery pack. And there's only a $500 rebate for those with hybrid cars. So things like a Toyota Prius that has a gasoline engine and a battery pack, but you cannot plug it into the wall. These rebates can't be combined, by the way. It's, it's whatever works out on the table. Again, I'll have a link in the show description um, and you can look at what vehicles uh, are eligible and what the amount you would get on the vehicle. It's, it's actually well set up. Now, Quebec also has rebates on home charging stations, so it will cover $350 of the purchase of an EVSC, that's the charger on the wall, and up to $250 for the installation um, and the power supply equipment to make that work. The other provision for that too is the EVSC must be new and it has to be 240 volts. So the last thing you may be thinking is, I don't live in any of these provinces. Um, there's no incentives. Uh, what can I do? So my suggestion is, is uh, contact your local Minister of Parliament and then ask them what their plans are to try and get more electric vehicles on the roads. Um, don't make it about incentives or rebates. That's not the goal here. It's about doing the right thing. And uh, while you're talking to them or you're writing to them or communicating with them, point out what BC, Ontario are, and Quebec are doing to get more EVs on the road and encourage them to um, look at our programs and try and do something similar to that um, to increase the adoption of electric vehicles because, and I think I've mentioned this before, that right now electric vehicles cost more than the equivalent of a gasoline engine vehicle. So incentives are there just like anything else to get people to change their behavior, maybe consider something else that they would not normally be able to afford until the cost of these vehicles come down to a reasonable level to be on parity with a uh, gasoline vehicle, where at that point the incentives are no longer needed and they can be phased out. So that's it for today. I hope that it helps to explain a little bit more of the details on these different incentive programs on the different provinces. Again, look at the show notes at the bottom. I have links to every one of these and you can read it for yourself and determine whether it works for you or not. Anyhow, so that's it for today, and uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Model3Owners. You can join our forum at Model3OwnersClub.com. Appreciate if you'll take a look at our Patreon page at uh, patreon.com forward slash Model3OwnersClub to keep the channel going. And uh, hey, we got some really cool t-shirts too if you're interested in everything about the Model 3. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.